Trait number eight, chicken skin. If you've got tiny rough bumps on the backs of your arms or thighs, and no amount of scrubbing seems to smooth them out, you're not alone. You're also not dirty, broken, or in need of another overpriced body scrub. Turns out, you could be carrying around a Neanderthal skincare routine. That condition is called keratosis pilaris, sometimes nicknamed chicken skin, and it's surprisingly common. It happens when your skin produces too much keratin, a protein that blocks hair follicles, causing those little bumps. And while it's harmless, it's also deeply annoying, especially when it shows up just in time for summer tank top season. Some researchers think this trait traces back to Neanderthal skin biology. Their skin had to adapt to colder, drier climates, with different hair and sweat gland patterns than modern Homo sapiens. So traits like thicker keratin production or altered follicle structure may have helped trap heat or protect the skin, even if those traits seem useless or irritating now. So no, your skin isn't broken. It's just pointlessly trying to survive an ice age, and all you wanted was smooth arms for summer. Trait number seven, being a night owl. While some people seem to wake up cheerful at sunrise like it's a Disney movie, others don't hit their stride until the rest of the world is winding down. If your brain insists on holding staff meetings at midnight, there's a good chance your internal clock is running on a much older version of human software, courtesy of Neanderthal DNA. Researchers have identified certain gene variants linked to what's known as delayed sleep phase, a fancy way of saying your body prefers to stay up late and sleep in. And this isn't just a quirk of personality or poor discipline. It's biological. People with this inherited circadian rhythm simply feel more alert in the evening and struggle to get sleepy at normal hours. In Neanderthal times, this was actually useful. In small tribes or early human groups, it helped to have someone awake at all times. A night owl ancestor might have stayed up to keep the fire burning, keep watch for predators, or poke the other guy with a stick if he started snoring too loud. That staggered sleep cycle could have helped entire groups survive the night. So if you're wide awake at 1 a.m. Googling why you're wide awake at 1 a.m., turns out it's not your fault. Your DNA is just on the night shift. Okay, here's something that might make you feel a little less dramatic. Trait number six, heightened sensitivity to pain. You know those people who flinch when they stub their toe and then dramatically limp around like they've been shot? What if that's not just theatrics? What if some people are actually wired to feel more pain than others because of their caveman ancestors? Scientists have discovered that a specific gene variant linked to heightened pain sensitivity comes straight from Neanderthals. This gene tweaks the way our nerves send pain signals to the brain, making them fire more easily and more often. So if you've got this variant, it technically means your pain threshold is lower, but not because you're weaker. It's because your nerves are more reactive. Your body is basically yelling when everyone else's is just whispering. This made a lot of sense 50,000 years ago. In a world full of sharp rocks, freezing temperatures, and predators with very large teeth, feeling pain quickly could be the difference between life and death. If something was wrong with your body, even a small cut or strain, you needed to know right away so you could fix it or avoid making it worse. Neanderthals didn't have painkillers or urgent care. They had to rely on their bodies to speak up fast and loudly. But in today's world, it just means you're more likely to suffer deeply from minor injuries or be mocked for overreacting to a paper cut. So next time someone accuses you of being overly sensitive, you can tell them it's not weakness. It's your ancient biology keeping you alive, or at least trying to. Trait number five, risk of nicotine addiction. Some people can smoke a cigarette at a party and never touch it again. Others try it once, and suddenly they're sneaking out of work meetings to light up behind the dumpster. Turns out, this difference might not just be about willpower. It could go all the way back to your Neanderthal ancestors. Geneticists have discovered that certain Neanderthal-derived variants, specifically in a gene called CHRNA5, affect how our brain's reward system responds to stimuli, especially dopamine, the chemical responsible for feelings of pleasure and reinforcement. While nicotine shows the strongest link, this kind of reward sensitivity may also make some people more vulnerable to other addictive substances that trigger fast dopamine spikes, like alcohol or stimulants. These genes don't just make you enjoy rewards more, they make your brain chase them harder. This trait probably made a lot of sense in prehistoric times. When survival was a daily challenge, a strong response to rewards, like food, fire, or warmth, could motivate you to take risks, explore new areas, or try something dangerous but potentially life-saving. A sharp dopamine spike was basically your brain's way of saying, hey, that worked, do it again. But in the modern world, that same system gets hijacked by things like nicotine, a substance that hits the brain fast, triggers a reward, and then fades, which keeps you coming back. 
over and over. So if you've ever felt like quitting nicotine was harder for you than for everyone else, you might be right. It's not weakness. It's your brain running an ancient motivational program, one that doesn't know cigarettes aren't mammoth steaks. All right, here's one you might not sweat over, but maybe you should. Trait number four, reduced ability to sweat. You know that friend who somehow stays bone dry during a workout while you're one squat away from turning into a human waterfall? That might not just be luck. It could be ancient climate coding. Scientists have linked certain Neanderthal DNA to a reduced density of Ekron sweat glands, the ones responsible for producing most of the sweat on your body. These glands are a key part of how humans regulate temperature, especially during heat or physical exertion. Fewer glands means less sweat, which sounds great until you overheat. Why would this be an evolutionary win? Think about the environment. Neanderthals evolved in colder, drier parts of Europe and Asia, where excessive sweating wasn't exactly necessary or helpful. In sub-zero temperatures, sweating too much could actually be dangerous. Moisture freezes, and hypothermia happens. So less sweat meant better survival odds. That same trait today means your body might not be great at cooling itself in hot or humid climates. You might not notice it day to day, but during intense exercise or heat waves, you could be more prone to overheating, even if you look totally chill. So yeah, if your body refuses to sweat, it's not because you're calm, it's because your internal thermostat is still set to glacial tundra. Trait number three, depression and mood disorders. Ever felt like your emotional baseline is set just a little lower than everyone else's? Like you're more sensitive to stress, prone to low moods, or just feel things a bit too deeply? It might not be that your life sucks. It might be your wiring, and that wiring could go all the way back to the Ice Age. Several studies have linked Neanderthal DNA to increased risk for depression and mood disorders, especially in people of European and Asian ancestry. Researchers think this has to do with gene variants that affect how the brain processes serotonin and cortisol, two chemicals heavily involved in mood regulation and stress response. In harsh Ice Age environments, being hyper-aware of threats or attuned to negative outcomes may have actually helped our ancestors survive. A little extra pessimism could keep you from wandering too far, trusting the wrong person, or getting eaten by something with too many teeth. It was protective. But today, that same wiring can show up as anxiety, low mood, or a tendency to spiral when life gets too chaotic. This doesn't mean your fate is sealed. Environment still matters, and brains are flexible. But if you've always felt like you carry a heavier emotional load, your brain could still be bracing for a world that no longer exists. Which, honestly, is kind of exhausting. Trait number two, autoimmune tendencies. Your immune system is supposed to protect you, but sometimes it acts like that one overzealous friend who thinks everything is a threat. A slice of bread? Attack. Your own joints? Definitely suspicious. If you've ever dealt with mysterious inflammation, strange allergies, or even autoimmune conditions, some of it might be coming from Neanderthal DNA. Researchers have found that certain immune system genes we inherited from Neanderthals are still active in modern humans. These genes helped early humans survive in hostile environments filled with unfamiliar pathogens. Their immune systems had to be on high alert because a single infection could be fatal. So Neanderthal immune traits were wired for speed and aggression. That was great when every berry, animal bite, or water source could carry something deadly. But in today's cleaner, more controlled environments, that same overactive immune system can turn inward. It starts attacking things it shouldn't, like pollen, food proteins, or even your own tissues. This could help explain why some people are more prone to conditions like celiac disease, lupus, or weird chronic inflammation that doesn't seem to go away. It's not hypochondria. It's your ancient immune system trying to fight a battle that no longer exists. Trait number one, increased risk of blood clotting. Picture this. You're a Neanderthal, trudging through rocky terrain, hunting something with horns, and you take a bad fall. There are no stitches, no sterile gauze, and no hospital. If you start bleeding, you need to stop it fast, or you don't make it to dinner. That's the world where certain blood clotting traits evolved. Some of us today carry Neanderthal-derived variants that make the blood clot more quickly and aggressively. Back then, this was life-saving. A stronger clotting response meant a better chance of surviving wounds, childbirth, and daily physical hazards that would make most modern people cry just looking at them. But here's the catch. In today's world, this same fast clotting trait can be a liability. We're no longer fending off saber-toothed tigers or treating gashes with tree sap. Instead, we're sitting for long periods, flying on planes, or dealing with diets and stressors that can quietly increase clotting risk. And that can lead to problems like deep vein thrombosis, 
strokes, or pulmonary embolisms, especially in people with these inherited variants. So if your doctor ever says you have a tendency to clot, just know it's not random. Your blood is still prepping for a life of blunt force trauma and zero medical care. We explain a lot around here. Subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next.